Hey folks, thanks for coming. How's my audio back there? Good? Cool, great. All right, welcome to Hello World. Hello World, anyone get that joke? Anyone get that reference? Thank you very much. I worked very hard on that. Um, spear phishing at scale using generative AI. Um, all right, so quick background why we're here. Uh, is there echo or just a little bit of echo? Maybe, all right. Um, testing, all right, there we go. Thank you, sir, appreciate it. Okay, so uh, I'm on the internet. You can find me pretty much everywhere at Jay Camju, or I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Sublime Security. We detect and prevent lots of email attacks. That's why we're here today, to share a little bit about what we've been seeing in the wild. Um, and also some, um, share a little bit of experience, um, so some of what we recreated on the offensive side. Um, my background prior to Sublime, spent most of my career in the offensive cyberspace, so it's a little bit of what we're gonna be bringing today. Um, all right. So, quick overview of what we're gonna be covering. We got a lot on the agenda. Um, we're gonna mostly spend most of our time talking about Gen AI use by adversaries and what we've been seeing in the wild, as well as um, what we were able to recreate relatively quickly to just demonstrate really the, the barrier of entry to doing this stuff and, and how low it is. And we'll talk about detection and then defense and depth strategies as well. So before we do, I don't think it's a surprise to anyone that the um, threat landscape is rapidly, rapidly shifting. We're seeing this in, in email in particular, lots of new techniques being employed. Uh, anyone see like QR code phishing recently or heard of it? Callback phishing, I mean, it feels like every day we're seeing new types of attack variants. The question is like, you know, why? What's the motivation behind it? Um, when, we're, when, when speaking about um, financially motivated adversaries. You have different types of adversaries with different objectives. You've got nation states um, who may be financially motivated but have other motives as well, like espionage, you know, intel collection. When speaking about financially motivated adversaries, they are seeking high ROI opportunities. Um, there's two inputs into ROI. There's return on investment. Return is the financial reward at the end and investment is the time, money, resources allocated to achieve that return. So keep this in mind. This is why you know, we'll see, obviously, the adoption of Gen AI by attackers, because it makes them more efficient. Um, so quick terminology overview. Um, has anyone not heard of Gen AI or LOMs? Yeah, all right, cool. So we won't belabor that point, but just to draw a distinction here, um, Gen AI is really like the umbrella term that includes image generation, video creation, audio synthesis, code generation, and it also includes LLMs. So LLMs are a subset of Gen AI, um, and LLMs um, focus more on text generation, summarization, that kind of thing. Uh, for the purpose of the talk, we're just gonna use the umbrella term, but just so we're aware of the terminology there and why we're using what. And just a, a couple words on the landscape here. And um, we've really got two, um, two different kind of even ph philosophical approaches to the landscape. We've got um, the closed models and we've got the open source models. Everyone I'm sure is well, very well familiar with OpenAI, maybe not as familiar with the others, Anthropic Cohere. Uh, these are all accessible via API. These are how these closed models make their um, models available. And we've got the open source models, and you, you run them locally generally, or you can deploy them elsewhere using tools like Olama. Um, so when, when talking about what we've recreated, um, or even attacker usage, you can generally see either one of these depending on privacy preferences um, or the lack thereof. So, We're seeing, I mean, this is probably not news to anyone that this is happening in the wild today. Um, and it's happening pretty much through many different attack vectors. So not just email, 
We've got the FBI warning um, around voice and video cloning down at the bottom left there. And we've got Microsoft talking about Forrest Blizzard, a Russian threat actor employing LLMs for various purposes, um, recon and uh, enhanced scripting generation. So really we're seeing, um, we are seeing adoption quite literally by um, adversaries. And bringing it back to the former point around why, right? Um, it makes folks, it makes you more efficient. Um, and it lowers your investment and it increases your return. And we'll talk about very specifically in the email domain what it enables you to achieve um, beyond just efficiency. Uh, really, we're talking about efficacy of attacks as well. So let's get right into it around the attacks we've, we're seeing in the wild. So a quick note on this, right? It is practically impossible to assess with confidence that something is Gen AI uh, um, originating. Um, so if anyone tells you with certainty that it is, like unless they were on the adversary's keyboard and observed it happening, it's impossible to say with certainty, right? Um, so we are saying likely, we use likely AI generated uh, with very, very high confidence. And we're making that assessment just for transparency's sake using uh, some of these factors, right? So we're talking to our customers and validating that these are in fact uh, fake threads, fabricated identities, real events that are happening. Um, we're seeing similar variants across multiple customers, but tailored uniquely to certain ones. Um, we look at thousands and fa millions and, and very manually eyes on glass like thousands of messages, and like we analyze them. So we have a lot of experience. Um, so we've got instinct for what looks, feels, and looks like AI generated and, and what's not. Um, and then we are, in, in, throughout the course of this presentation, we will also show the output of some of these AI detector um, tools. So there's a bunch of these out there. Uh, this is a relatively new field, the, detec the detection of AI generated text. Um, so it's very nascent. It's not a reliable thing that you can use to like detect things. There's a lot of FPs or a lot of FNs, but um, it's, it's a thing. So we, we show the output of some of these throughout this. So here's the first one. Um, this is writing to um, verify and request um, invoices and basically start a conversation. And there's a bunch of things happening here. There's um, an impersonation of an organization's, like a real uh, contact at this organization. What's really notable about this, like invoice fraud is not a new thing, right? That's been happening for a long time, but it's generally riddled with like poor grammar um, and you know, threat actors that are non-English speaking that clearly just threw some shit into Google Translate and it's like not that really well written. And so this is, what's interesting about this is that it's um, proper English. There's a structure to the paragraphs here. It reads like relatively well. Um, and so really we're seeing just better formatted um, generic, this is like not highly targeted, right? We'll talk, we'll get to the more targeted stuff, but it's interesting because even the low level mass phishing campaigns are stepping up and, and they are not your, your Nigerian print scams anymore, right? They're, they're well uh, structured. So over on the left here, we also have identified some signals here. We will come back to this towards the end when talking about detection, but I wanted to highlight some of the signals that you can actually use um, for each one of these. So we'll come back to that. Um, Mention these AI generator detector tools. Here is, I think, one called Zero GPT that assesses with high confidence that every single word here was generated with um, a tool uh, with, with, that was generated by AI. Um, it makes these, you, you can look up how it's making these interpretations, really a variety of factors like randomness, the probability of certain words, the uh, variation of sentence structure, the length of sentences. There's a lot of factors that go into these assessments. Um, but yeah, interesting 
uh, assessment there. All right, example two, who has, who has received or seen a benefits enrollment phishing scam before? Yeah? Okay, a few people. Um, so this is n like not necessarily a new uh, technique, right? We are seeing old tried and true techniques that are better than before. Um, this is proper English. There's, you know, one, two, three, four, these are all proper, like it makes sense, it's well structured, there's no grammatical errors here. And so we are seeing the older, th these like tried and true techniques around um, pretext uh, and the, the techniques that are being employed just stepping up in complexity or in convincing and how convincing they are. The other reason I wanted to highlight this is that there is a PDF attachment on this message that uh, has an embedded QR code. So this is actually a QR code attack. And so um, you can see the, the uh, blurred out part there. And so what is happening here almost certainly is like auto generation of PDFs um, and, and embedding of QR codes as well in attachments, so um, quite interesting. And here we can see a different uh, AI detector tool uh, assumes, uh, predicts 100% of this was AI generated. Okay, on to the most interesting one that we have come across as of late. Um, there's a lot that is redacted here because there, is, there are real identities, there are real events, and so for you know, customer privacy reasons, we've had to redact this, but um, this attack uh, has an entirely fabricated thread with responses, with fabricated responses from real identities at the target organization about a real event. Um, and we'll go through each one of these. It's quite interesting. So the first email in the thread um, is coming from uh, the, a, a fake message that's purporting to be from the target organization, an entity at the target that is reaching out to the gala saying that they want to pledge $25,000 to this event. The, the, we've got a reply coming back saying that they are, um, they wanted to express their heartfelt appreci appreciation and send a package for sponsorship. Um, and then we've got uh, a follow-up where in threaded reply to, um, these are actually um, real organization names in the target's industry. So they've, got, they've done some you know, enrichment here and are saying, hey, X company and Y company are already in um, and they filled out the form and whatnot. And then we've got another fake reply uh, purporting to be from the target organization saying where to send invoices to. And then we finally have the last message in the thread, which is you know, what, what the actual attack is which is sending the invoice. So we've got someone in finance that receives it, sees that there's been exchanges and everything looks legit, um, and it is quite in fact not legit. So very, very interesting development here. And you can see that this is, um, that the AI detector actually does a worse job on this. And ultimately, like these things are just they have too many FPs, too many false negatives. So if you are kind of relying on this on a day to day, just know that you know there, it's it's a relatively nice, it's a relatively new field that's that's developing on the detection side. So we did verify with the customer um, that this was in fact completely fake, uh, did not exist. The sender's domain, if we pop back over, um, was actually registered. Um, a few days prior to the attack. So it was just registered, newly registered domain. It was designed to impersonate. Um, so quite, quite interesting here. So 
What's the impact of this ultimately on the email threat landscape? Uh, messages are more tailored, they're more convincing. They're more correct grammatically. They're more diverse when, when looking at a campaign across multiple organizations. And um, they have more reach because they are landing in the inboxes more opposed to spam. So uh, just for fun, I wanted to see like what it would take to kind of recreate something that was quite convincing. So um, there's, there's lots and lots of tools. This isn't a talk about OSINT. Um, but you know, there's plenty of talks on gathering information on entities in an automated way. Here's some of those tools. Um, so you can go pull in, pull information from identities, from organizations, crawl websites, crawl LinkedIn, all these types of things. There are services that already have all this information, like Full Contact, um, or, or even Clearbit provides um, logos. Give it a domain, it'll give you a logo. So um, all of these enable you to automate this. And for recency, uh, or, or for more um, uh, higher chance of success, the if you can include, and this is a personal opinion from just coming, having, uh, spending most of my career on the offense, like if you want to convince someone of something um, or have a better chance, one technique: use a recent event, use something they said, use something that is like highly relevant and timely, not just some generic thing, right? So, hey, I saw you at this event. Hey, I saw, you know, something that is like much more believable. So we took all this information. This is a bunch of info gathered about me. So name, title, past roles, um, recent activity from socials. This was like one of the key inputs here. So pulling a bunch of my recent LinkedIn posts, a bunch of my recent uh, Twitter posts, and then giving a prompt um, that we've iterated on. So I'll read some of this. Uh, you are a computer scientist who writes very dull with little excitement and is extremely terse. Craft an email message. Do not sound salesy at all or make any generic statements. Keep it extremely short and concise, a few sentences at most. Uh, it, goes, it goes on to say, to give some additional direction, um, mention that you're sharing a document and say how specifically relevant to the observation, how it's specifically relevant to the observations above and think they'd be useful or relevant, be casual, double check your work uh, to ensure you are not making up anything that didn't happen. So this is what we get. Um, this was after not much iteration. Um, Hi, Josh. I saw your LinkedIn post about the increasing sophistication of phishing attacks, link post. Your points on adaptive threat for detection were insightful. That is sort of, you know, relatively what I was talking about. Uh, I'm sharing a document on recent phishing methods that relates to your observations. I think you'll find it relevant and useful. Uh, and we can embed then our lure in a, a Word document or a PDF or something like that. Um, Decently, like I might click on this. Um, like I want to know what, yeah, what you're talking about. Recent phishing methods, like that makes sense. Um, so, really, this was an exercise to understand, like, what does it take? Uh, and it's the the barrier to entry has has been lowered significantly. So um, that's just something to really grok. Um, okay, really quickly, we'll we'll go through the last few bits here: detection and prevention. So. On the detection side, it's not all that different from, from targeted, like tailored attack detection. So even for this guy, right, um, we're using signals like, hey, um, you've never spoken to this person before. There's a suspicious Word document. There is a, it's a malicious Word document. It's a malicious PDF. There is a suspicious link in the PDF. We're going to, you know, there's a link that we analyze that auto downloads an ISO. Like, it's not all that different on the detection side. Um, but attackers are um, just constantly evolving these techniques, right? So, you know, there's thousands of these signals. Um, but the point is that it's, it's on the detection side, it's not very different, even as things get more uh, advanced. And 
Um, we talked a lot about the offensive applications of, of generative AI. There's a lot of, of course, defensive applications from language analysis, intent classification. Um, so this is one thing that you know, we do very heavily around identifying text and understanding its intent, um, extracting entities. This is called NER, named entity recognition. Is there a request being made? Is there a sense of urgency? Things like that. And of course, you know, there's, there's so many more around um, alert prioritization, socky. There's a, this is really just the beginning of um, a lot of interesting defensive applications. So the last word to wrap up, um, defense in depth, really there's, it, obviously like if you can block it at the email layer, like left of boom, right? As far left as you can go, great, but you should always have a defense in depth mentality. Um, educate your users, right? It's important to know that phishing attacks um, can be extremely convincing. It, it's not just the, hey, the, the Microsoft Teams alert or the fake Microsoft Teams alert or things like that. Like, it can be quite convincing. Um, for credential phishing attacks, employ MFA, ideally hardware-based, like YubiKeys. And for, to prevent BEC, have a multimodal approval for large transactions, multi-layered. Um, all right. Um, I think we've touched on all this. It's, it's just, it's still very nascent. It's, it's getting worse. So, um, thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, any questions for Josh? Okay. I'll bring the mic right over. So, with regard to detection, uh, how much are the, like, the much more common uh, kind of that, that grammar, uh, like helping apps like Grammarly, Microsoft Copilot, e even just Gmail, how much is that kind of like fuzzing with uh, those detection algorithms that you guys are using to, because we're probably, I, I would assume, seeing more and more corporate users using that uh, to, you know, help themselves, but then all obviously, you know, with Gen AI uh, then being used to create these phishing messages, how much is that kind of like, wreaking havoc with those detection models as in uh for the for like the gmail for gmail's detection model or for like how, how are they so like, earlier you kind of had like 50 percent you know yeah you know yeah so then obviously you've got more users like real users using these gen ai based uh apps to help with their grammar and and you know in their email yeah yeah Oh yeah, like how does that impact detection, basically? Well, that, that's why I don't think you can use these detectors as like inputs into detection, right? It, it's, it's too many false positives. Yeah. One more. Um, so do you think that, like I guess the overall mitigations that you would take against phishing, let's say, are like drastically changed by this? Or is it just that the phishing is more effective? The latter. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much, Josh. Uh, lunch break. Other talks are going on in other tracks. Otherwise, we'll see you back here at uh, 2 p.m. for Hacking Arcades. Thanks.